Why are people always staring at me when I'm filming? I mean, I'm just talking to a camera holding fragrance bottles up. What is weird about that? I don't get it. Just mind your own business and eat your ice creams, people. Or subscribe. to Waterfall Mental. I'm Chris, thanks for joining me in today's exciting instalment. We are, of course, hunting a waterfall, and I thought maybe we'll just talk a little bit about fragrances too, because I think a couple of you might be interested. So, in today's video, I'm gonna be comparing Fahrenheit EDT and Fahrenheit Le Parfum. Okay, so Fahrenheit Le Parfum sprayed on this arm and Fahrenheit EDT on this arm. Smell them both. What do you think? I think we've just filled up the car. I can't smell anything but fuel. Okay, no, that's that's fine. People say it smells of fuel, so oh. that's what you get. <laughs> and what about that one? Yeah, that one's, yeah. Preference? Nice. Probably that one. Right, listen, I need you to do me a favour. I need you to tell me which one you like the best. Well that? Yeah. And then whoop, this one. That one. You like that one better? Yeah. Mummy thinks it smells like petrol. No. Nope. I nope. think it smells like lavender. Yeah, I think there is some lavender in there. Well done. This has got got um, boozy alcohol in it as well and, and you don't do you drink alcohol? Yeah. I just need your opinion on something. I really value your opinion. Could you smell that one? Fahrenheit Le Parfum. This one? Mummy thinks this one smells like petrol. Do you think it smells like petrol? I don't know what petrol smells like. Okay, well, fair play. This is my mate Sean. How you doing, Sean? Keeping wool, I hope. Okay, so let's briefly talk about Fahrenheit EDT. Bit of an old school fragrance, released in 1988. What I really like about the EDT is the creativity. And Dior are often a fragrance house that are giving us creativity. I feel sometimes they're pushing the boundaries as far as designer mainstream fragrances go. So I find it to be a pretty unique fragrance. Let me tell you the notes inside. There's lavender, mandarin, orange, hawthorn, nutmeg flower, cedar, bergamot, chamomile and lemon, nutmeg, honeysuckle, carnation, sandalwood, violet leaf, jasmine, lily of the valley, leather, tonka bean, amber, patchouli, musk and vetiver. My camera just keeps getting funny looks. Every time people see me, they always look down at my camera as if to say, what the hell is that? And I think it's the furry microphone on the top people aren't used to seeing those and it maybe looks like there's a dead squirrel sitting on top of my camera maybe that's it so one thing you have really got to get used to when you're talking to the camera like this is just not caring about people staring at you people are going to be staring at you talking to the camera because really these days it's something that people don't see very often not up here on the North Yorkshire moors anyway so when you see these videos you just see my face talking to you and it doesn't seem weird but it does look quite weird. So you've just really not got to care in the slightest about people seeing you talk. Once you get over that little inhibition, and it, oh, someone's coming. Sorry? I was carry on, don't stop. Oh no. <laughs> they were definitely loving my furry microphone. So to me, what makes this scent so interesting is its creativity, but it's not so creative or artistic that it becomes too challenging. It remains very much mainstream. I think the reason that people associate this scent DNA with this petrol or gasoline smell that people so often describe, and you just saw that Helen 
thought the same thing. She literally thought I'd spilled fuel on my hand when I was filling up the car, like literally, no joke. And what I think it is, is the florals. So the carnation and the indolic qualities of the jasmine and the lily of the valley. I think these are combining with maybe the leather and the musks in here just to give off this this really interesting petroleum vibe so to me it's this floral leathery petrol smelling fragrance and it smells great Dark. i've never seen you clearer than that We're flying high. okay let's talk about le parfum when my focus finds me so fahrenheit le parfum is a 2014 release as you might imagine, it is a deeper, richer, smoother, sweeter, more sensual fragrance. Let me tell you the notes. The notes are suede, Sicilian mandarin, licorice root, violet leaf absolute, rum absolute, coriander, caraway, and bourbon vanilla. Oh, wasted. City lights are shining so bright. All these empty faces. And I know what you're thinking, if you're familiar with these fragrances. You're thinking, but Le Parfum is more of a sweet, rich, autumn winter fragrance, so how can you possibly compare that to an eau de toilette when it's summer? Well, welcome to summer here in the UK. It's actually quite a, an overcast, slightly breezy, cool day. So really, I think it's absolutely perfect. Okay, what an absolutely brilliant fragrance. Fahrenheit Le Parfum is. I get a connection, a little bit of a connection to the EDT DNA, but it's nowhere near as potent. It rounds things off, no sharp edges. It's not as assertive. I get this lovely sweet spiced rum and vanilla, and then there's a little hint of suede in there as well. It is a very smooth, very well-rounded fragrance. Quite modern smelling as well. It smells more modern to me than Fahrenheit EDT. It's not as assertive as the EDT. It's smoother, it's richer, it's more sensual. I'd say this is a sexy fragrance. It's artistic without being challenging. It's got great mass appeal. And yes, I think it would work really well autumn, winter, but here in the UK, it's an overcast, cloudy day. Not too hot, not too cold. And you know what, this is working really well. So personally, I can wear this in the summer. Okay, let's bring this thing to a conclusion and what better place than at the waterfall. It's not a waterfall that shows up well on camera. It is there behind me, maybe you can hear it on the sound, I'm not sure. I'll throw in some sexy slow-mo so you get a good look at the waterfall. It is quite impressive. Let's talk about these two fragrances. So, Fahrenheit EDT, Fahrenheit Parfum. I have been wearing these side by side today, but for a few weeks I've been testing them. So, I would just like to share my opinion on what my preference is. Okay, let's start with the EDT. This is the most artistic, the most creative, the most unique of these two fragrances. And that is why the DNA of this has lasted and lasted since 1988. It's become a part of people's lives. Fahrenheit EDT is just a known and much loved DNA. One of the things I love about Dior is that they'll just push the boundaries a little bit in terms of artistic creativity, but they know when to stop and allow a fragrance to remain popular and remain mass appealing. So I've really enjoyed wearing this. I do think it smells classic, but not dated. I think if you're wearing this, unless someone has an association with someone years ago who used to wear this, I don't think people will particularly think the DNA is dated. However, I do think the DNA of La Parfum is definitely more modern. I think there's a trend these days for creative fragrances, but fragrances that are appealing there seems to be a lot of vanilla going into fragrances people tend to really enjoy sweet fragrances look at the popularity of things like baccarat rouge very sweet fragrance and this does have that sweetness it has that sexiness it has that modern vibe it has that modern appeal now if you know me at all if you know my channel you know that i am more drawn to fragrances like this and as much as i admire and enjoy the creativity in this fragrance i like this fragrance but i love La Parfum. This is right up my street. 
a bit of booziness in there. All it's lacking really to be my perfect fragrance is maybe a little bit of tobacco, but you know, you can't have everything. It's still a fantastic fragrance. I'd go as far as to say this is probably a 10 out of 10 fragrance. In terms of performance, I was expecting the EDT to really outperform Le Parfum. I thought the Eau de Toilette would be more diffusive and I think perhaps in the opening in the first hour this is going to give you more projection. But this is a higher concentration. It behaves more like an Eau de Parfum to me rather than a Parfum. I'm not sure if it is actually a Parfum concentration or not. But it has a certain amount of projection. This is such a potent fragrance that on the skin for me the EDT lasts just as long as Le Parfum. So it just comes down to which scent DNA I prefer. Both of these fragrances have a lot going for them. The EDT has that classic DNA that so many people are so familiar with and have positive associations. This one is probably better in terms of versatility and certainly comes off as a more artistic fragrance if that's your kind of thing. But this, this is just sweet and boozy and beautiful. And out of these two, Le Parfum is my preference. So this is just my opinion. Many people out there may prefer this one, but I'm just letting you know what I think. At the end of the day, you've got to smell these both for yourself and make up your own mind. Okay, so there you go. Those are my opinions on those two fragrances. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it useful. Thank you so much for watching. It's always appreciated. Remember, keep tuning into FM and keep smelling good. Now enjoy the sexy slow-mo. I'm only kidding, it's not started yet. Roll the slow-mo.